But on the other hand, we need to consider the health of people in Adana. As you can see, various things are being done here to raise the awareness of the local population and of farmers. This allows everything to be kept in balance so that local people have a sustainable source of income and the people of Adana have cleaner drinking water. In fact, all this is linked to what we call resources limited resources. I believe that now there are completely different kinds of production. For example, olive trees are grown. But this is something that didn't exist in this region, right? Yes. In fact, the important thing in areas like this, where people's sources of income are limited, is to offer them opportunities. The general framework of our grant program is to offer people opportunities. For example, diversifying sources of income. Because, particularly in places where sources of income are dependent on natural resources, any change in the climate puts their source of income at risk, and so we need to give them other options. The horticulture department of Chukarova University is working in studies to measure the resistance of different plants to drought and salinity. This research has come up with results that can serve as a guide to show which plants we can use and which varieties are suitable for our region in case of drought or higher salinity in the area during the next 10 years. Chukurova is Turkey's biggest vegetable producing area. Favorable weather conditions play a very important role in this. Vegetables are grown throughout the year. Summer vegetables in summer, winter vegetables in winter. It doesn't just provide for the needs of the area, but for the whole of Turkey. So we could say that it's the heart of Turkey in this respect. The basis of our project is to identify, determine and protect local vegetable varieties that are resistant to drought and salinity. As part of this project, we visited every area of Turkey, from province to province, district to district, village to village, collecting vegetable seeds. We brought local vegetable varieties and their seeds to our university and artificially recreated conditions of drought and salinity. We think that in the future, when climate change becomes a problem, the first stress factor we will face will be water shortage, in other words, drought and salinity. We grew local varieties in these artificial conditions and determined which ones were most resistant. Of course, in order to determine this, we also carried out physiological and morphological analyses, tests and measurements. Our aim is to protect the most resistant varieties. By storing their seeds in our department and by informing the National Gene Bank, we are working to protect for the future resistant varieties of local vegetables, which have perhaps been forgotten. We are protecting these varieties in order to look after national biodiversity and to protect our seed resources. This is the main goal of our project. In order to adapt existing policies to climate change, the first thing we need is reliable data. And in order to manage the water sources that are becoming more valuable every day, we need to generate knowledge. Just as we need to know how much water we use from our taps, we need to know how much water we use in irrigation. When we look at water use by sector in the Seyhan River Basin, we see that the agricultural sector uses the most water, at 70%. We want to reduce this figure. Measuring the water that we use in irrigation is very important in this respect. The project that we've been running for almost a year within the climate change adaptation in the Seyhan River Basin program has now come to an end. We managed to achieve the aims that we had set at the beginning of the project. We shared this with our audience 
audience and all of her shareholders in the final conference today and, taking into account their opinions, concluded that the project had been successful. Within this project, we presented forecasts about how changes in the water budget at a time of climate change will affect the Seihan River Basin, and how climate change will affect people's needs, and how the supply-demand balance will change. We stated that it would be possible to reduce most of the gaps, but that in some areas we will not be able to completely eliminate them. Sharing knowledge is just as important as generating it. And this is the aim of a website developed by the Provincial Directorate of Environment and Forestry for the Adana region. Thanks to the network created under this website, data on the climate in the Seihan River Basin is being collected systematically and studies by specialists are shared with the public. The Seihan River is about to offer a bountiful gift to the Chukurova Delta, the fertility it had gathered in Anatolia. This river basin is not just one of the most productive agricultural regions of Turkey, but also of Europe. We took farmers as the basis of our project. Our producers used high levels of chemical agricultural herbicides and chemical fertilizers, and they also use excessive amounts of water. All this causes damage to the environment and to the quality and level of agricultural production. In order to obtain agricultural production that does not damage the environment or human or animal health, we need to set up a production model of good agricultural practice that includes protection of natural resources, accountability and sustainability. Aflatoxin is a highly poisonous substance that has long-term negative effects on human health. As part of a project to examine this, we set up an aflatoxin analysis laboratory to serve local people and producers. Good agricultural practices means agricultural production that ensures food security and that is accountable and sustainable without damaging the environment or public health. Even though the government offers support in terms of agricultural practices for small farms, there is also demand from our industrial farmers for support regarding products from good agricultural practice and product registration. In the first year of our project, 4.9% of the agricultural products entering the market were good agricultural practice products. We started registering good agricultural practice products this year along with the project. And for the first time in Turkey, the Adana commodity market registered good agricultural practice products. Products with this certificate, sold with this stem, are sold to the customer at a higher price because the consumer has confidence in it. Yuri has high levels of migration from east and southeast Anatolia and from other districts of the Adana region. Literacy levels are low, unemployment levels are high. With this in mind, we decided to offer education to raise public awareness of global warming and climate change. We explained with examples how to make savings of electricity and water and we gave a survey to participants. The feedback was very positive. For example, when we went back to the primary schools where we had given seminars, we found that after only two months, their electricity and water bills had fallen by around 20 to 30 percent. We also offered training to farmers in the Çotlu Irrigation Union. We set up a pilot area there, 
where our aim was to show how effective a drip irrigation system could be. Thanks to our agricultural consultants, we planted olive, almond and pomegranate trees there. We have a project in global warming that was set up by the municipality of Yureir and the Chotlo Irrigation Union. Within this project, we were able to provide education to 120 of our farmers. They learned about how to use drinking water and how irrigation for agricultural purposes should be done. Thanks to drip irrigation, there was a 50% increase in production. The tree division and its five scots are ready, sir. Climate scouts at ease. Ready. Attention. The climate scouts with its 16 members are ready, sir. Thank you. Good morning, climate scouts. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Climate scouts, let's all go and see the trees that we planted for this project. Let's go. Climate change is a problem that will be faced mostly by future generations. We felt that if we explain this to the children of today, they will explain it to their own children, or they will make changes in their own lifestyle, and so we planned the project with this aim. Within the project, we gave climate scout training to 20 scouts over a period of two to three weeks. After that, we went together with the scouts to Adana, Kaiseri and Nide, and gave a total of 100 hours of lessons in 40 primary schools. We took three or four scouts to every school and we divided the children into groups. We found that the children were able to explain easily what they had learnt from us to their peers in the schools we went to. We thought that these children would serve as an example for other children. During the project, we also saw that after the children had learnt about climate change, they passed on their knowledge at home, in their neighbourhoods and at school. Their teachers and families all said that they too had made changes in various areas regarding climate change and the environment, from electricity savings to water savings. In Turkey, where 85% of the land is at risk of desertification, climate change is putting great pressure on grazing lands and livestock farming. An econometric modelling study of livestock farming under the effects of climate change is being carried out for the first time in the region. We took livestock farming in the Taurus mountain villages as the basis for this project. The Seyhan River Basin is divided into two regions, the upper and the lower Seyhan. But as livestock farming is practiced mostly in the mountain villages, we chose mountain and forest villages at an altitude of 900 meters or above, because this is where most of the damage to natural areas is caused. We offered training to 500 men who own livestock, 500 women and 500 children in their own villages. We also took 200 or even more of these people to Çukurova University to receive practical training. During this training, basic information was given on livestock farming practices that damage the environment and on global warming. It's just like the smoke coming out of your chimney. It's harmful to the animals. The animals will start coughing. You think that they've caught a cold, but they haven't. Our village is a paradise full of water. We call it the water paradise, for example. Because it's like this, at the beginning only 10 people came to the lessons. Today, 100 people came. People are showing more and more interest. 
We measured the effectiveness of the training using a questionnaire that we gave out at the beginning and the end of this project that we ran together with the United Nations. We found that we had met 40 to 70 percent of our aims, depending on the subject, and that the information given had been understood. Of course, we also aimed to reach women and children here, because, as you see behind me, the people who are mainly responsible for the animals are women and children. It's women and children who work as shepherds or who clean the fields. And so, our training was aimed mainly at them. We gave them practical training. The basic reason for choosing children for this training was that we didn't want them to give up livestock farming, because our country is an agricultural country, and livestock farming is very important for the country. With this project, we, the people of the village, learnt how to better farm our livestock without damaging the environment. In 2000, 191 countries drew up a roadmap to make progress in human development, the Millennium Development Goals. This document lays out eight concrete goals to be achieved by the year 2015. However, there is a great obstacle in front of the development goals, climate change. The one thing that is needed to achieve the goals for 2015, or in other words development, is adaptation. This program was set up because, in Turkey also, it is understood that in the quest to achieve these goals, climate change will pose a threat to the fight against poverty and to achieving gender equality and environmental sustainability. From regional farm